Okay, so um, I've got um, submissions from Zelitoli, from Lubega, from uh, I think I've seen, yeah, uh, Jafina, and then who else? Um, yeah, Sid Keno, and uh, yeah, so that's about it. So I haven't seen others. Um, given your submission, I hope you're working on it. So maybe next time we will uh, we will grade it. <laughs> okay, right. Um, okay, so we we were looking at um, you know preparing a message and uh, what goes into preparing a message. Some of the basic guidelines, right? We were looking at that. Um, so yeah, so we'll continue with that and uh, let's just pray and start, right? Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. What an awesome privilege it is, Father God, to be called your spokesperson. Or what a privilege it is to, Lord, to handle the eternal word. Lord, that we being finite people, oh God, that we get to handle, that we get to speak, we get to minister your eternal word, Father God. And uh, Lord, we thank you that you've given us the privilege of doing this. Lord, we thank you that you've called us to be co-workers in your kingdom. Lord, co-workers to work together, to build together, Lord. We thank you, Father God. And I just pray that even as we, Lord, go through today's class, that uh, Lord, you will establish certain things in us, Father God, strengthen certain things in us, Master. And at the same time, Lord, I just pray that um, you will remove, Lord God, certain things from us, whether it's fear, whether it's anxiety, or Lord, feelings of um, God, uh, um, insecurities, or, or feelings of inabilities, God. I just pray that uh, you'll bring us to that place, that um, that we can just flow the work of your Spirit, that we can just flow as ministers of God. And uh, what you inspire, Lord, to our hearts, what you establish in our hearts, God, even as we seek you with a big measure, or as you speak to us, what you establish in us, Lord, that we be faithful, Lord, to minister that, God. And Lord, even as we've been learning, Lord, I just pray for a continuous flow of revelation, Master, as we seek you, as we seek your face, God, as we wait upon you, Master, just pray for a continuous flow of revelation. Um, you know, God is infinite and he has so much to reveal to us, so much to show us. Um, and uh, all that he requires from us, of course, is the willingness and the sacrifice it takes and the patience it takes to be in his presence. So, um, you know, as we look into our own lives and maybe things are busy, maybe things are you know, some things that hinder us, maybe there are other things that have crowded our lives, um, things that we have not prioritized, and maybe we can do that you know, today and say, Lord, I prioritize this above everything else. Lord, you know, there will always be a constant, um, uh, this area will always be challenged. You know, our time with him and our study of the word, um, it's always going to be challenged. Um, and things will only get busier. But um, you know, as we take time to, to 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 really guard that time, you know, as we uh, as we say, God, this is precious, and I'm going to guard it with all my heart. Um, we will experience the hand of the Lord, and uh, the Lord will lead us and guide us. Right, Father, we thank you. Yes, Lord, we commit ourselves into your mighty hands, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. We pray, Amen. Amen. Okay, so uh, we've been looking at preparing a message. So we saw that God, the Lord, draws out what we normally put in, which means that we take time, we take, uh, we make the effort to read, to study, to be in His presence, to receive the revelation, and then uh, the Lord will draw it out. And so, at the right time, at the, for the right audience, and so He will draw it out. Okay, and we also saw, you know, um, how ministering Rema and um, the difference ministering the logos, and uh, both have their place. 
right? Um, both have their place, so both have their importance, and uh, so we need to do that. Um, and also, we saw that our dependence is on the Holy Spirit, right? So we we uh, we read through Second um, Corinthians three, and uh, we saw that our dependence, our sufficiency, our dependence is from the Holy Spirit, is on the Holy Spirit, right? Because He's the one who the one who can give us a word in season. He's the one who can quicken the word for us, um, and He's the one who can actually inspire us to speak. Um, uh, and deliver a prophetic word or, or even a prophetic act, right? So uh, our dependence is on him, right? And um, yeah, and uh, and also we saw that we need to study the word, not just a casual reading of it, but we need to do our part in, in digging deeper, like in going further and, uh, and studying the word of God. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, and then we looked at some of the practical things. Okay, I think that's where we stop. So we looked at how you should have we should have a single topic uh, or a single theme you know when we minister the word it helps us in many ways uh, it helps bring focus it helps the audience to stay focused uh, it helps them to retain what we are sharing and uh, which is very important because uh, we just don't want to speak and then go and everything else is just goes off we want that to be retained we want that to be there in people's hearts um, so so that that can be applied so this would help right a single point or a theme can help of course it can have many subtopics or sub themes right so that will that will always be there um, to flesh out this theme we will have many other sub points that will always be there uh, but one direction and one theme right uh, then we also saw we need to substantiate or um, um, you know, re, uh, not just reiterate, but to but to give weightage or say why we are saying or give reasons for why we are making that particular point. You know, for example, if I'm saying God is good, uh, I need to substantiate from the Word of God. Either God saying, you know, that Himself, or people testifying about God. You know, whatever it could be, right? We need to substantiate from Scripture because that is our reference point. Okay, so uh, when we substantiate from Scripture, it clarifies to the hearer uh, uh, several things. One, they're able to look into the Word and say, okay, this is not this man or this woman's, you know, own opinion, but it's actually the Word of God. Okay, so it's from the Word of God. So something happens to their spirit when they see that it's from the Word of God and when they receive it as from the Word of God. Right? The Holy Spirit who's in them quickens that Word to them, that truth that has been communicated right? with the reference as uh, a scripture. You know, it's, uh, I hope you're getting what, you, what I'm saying, right? It's, we're not just quoting scripture, but even the communication of the truth that it is here in scripture, right? Um, you could be far paraphrasing, you could be, you know, referring to some things that have happened. So, so basically, we're just anchoring the person in God's word, and the Holy Spirit will quicken that word to them, that truth to the hearer. And that's powerful, because that's how faith comes. Right? That is how faith is built up. So faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God, Romans 10. So faith comes. And when faith comes, then you know that person is able to apply. This person is able to live out that truth. Um, so that's very, very important. Okay, so, uh, so it also you know, kind of filters out all the, um, whether it's an opinion, whether it's a worldview, worldly view, whether it's tradition, whether it's just culture, you know, all that is filtered out because the person, the hearer knows that this is the, the word of God. So word of God comes with so much authority and power. And um, and that's it, you know, sometimes um, sometimes a simple word, the truth of God's word is just enough. Okay. Um, I remember um, reading through um, um, reading a book it was about this new age uh, guru right um, his name is tal brook and uh, i remember him 
uh, just writing about his testimony and how so he was involved in a lot of things he came here to india to study yoga and meditation and he was with um, the the um, uh, you know, with Rajneesh um, in, in, in that camp. And he was with the whole other, you know, a lot of these uh, New Age folks and then um, teachers. And uh, he was involved in um, uh, meditation. And, and also, he experienced a lot of things. He opened his life up to, you know, these demonic forces. And, and also, they used him to teach others. So he was very influential that way. You know, he used to travel to many places teach about meditation in the US, all over the world, um, have these supernatural experiences of teleportation and all those things. So he writes in his book. And then he also says how he came to the Lord. Okay, It is when he was driving in the US and you know, all this he was experiencing and uh, what he thought was the truth. And he heard, he was, he was tuned into some radio station. And he, for the first time, he heard some scripture, uh, I, I forget what it was, but then some scripture being read out or some scripture being, you know, being spoken, um, um, referred to. And he realized for that first time, you know, there was no strong argument or anything. You know, he just heard the scripture and then he believed. He said, he said at that point, he knew that this was the truth. Okay. So, it's so important for us to refer to this. So this this man with all these experiences, with all these you know supernatural things and everything, he was dabbling in a lot of things, but he heard the word of God, and that cut through all those you know all those false ideas and all those false experiences, and that cut through to his spirit. You know that 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 was so sharp the word of God. So, you know, Hebrews four says that it's living and alive and powerful, and and so it is. Right. And so he, he says it was a it was a completely one day, 180 degree turn from a new age guru and how he started sharing the gospel and, and how there were so many attacks because he was close to all these, you know, all these teachers and all these gurus and they would actually, you know, he experienced a lot of uh, uh, spiritual warfare, right, because he had, he was there in that uh, you know, at that level, so uh, he had opened up his life to you know all these demonic forces, and he experienced a lot of spiritual warfare, and he writes about that also, right? Uh, but all that to say that the word of God is powerful. Therefore, you know, make it a point to substantiate, make it a point to explain, give the reason why you are saying that, and let it be from scripture. Let it not be, you know, uh, because I think so, or I heard so, or you know, uh, so that's the thing, right? Okay, so stay focused on the theme, etc. Um, okay, make the word applicable. Um, we saw that. Um, let people go back and be able to do something with it. Okay, right. Like some some things would be just to just information. You know, you receive information. Uh, it could be to educate a person, uh, maybe about you know end times or you know several other things right it could be to just receive information and uh, and just you know uh, um, let that be there in the spirit okay you get a knowing of it you don't have to do anything out of it just to receive it okay now that could be that could be the case but also um or, or there there are, I mean, there are many times when you need to do something uh, with the truth that has been shared you need to take a step and do something about it and um, applying the word of god now that's very very important so uh, is there an application point you know maybe you're teaching about the prophetic you know can the person move into uh, prophesying and yeah, we're teaching about evangelism can the person you know step into uh, sharing the word okay and can we can and so in the message, you know, can you facilitate that? Okay, here are some things, you know, break it down, make it simple and say, here are some things that we can do. Okay, today, if you want to go back and maybe you, this is the environment that you are in, these are the people who are in touch with you. So can you take this step and do this, you know, and what are some methods, right? Some practical things. So that way, the hearer gets to apply the word, you know, uh, and do the word of God. Um, so they experience the truth of God's word. So it's it's only when we 
you know, when we apply, right, when we step out in faith and apply the word, live out the word, we experience the power of the word, right, the truth of the word, right. So maybe, you know, it's a message on holiness and purity and, you know, we someone uh, hears about it and, and does not do anything about it, then, you know, it, it's of no use, right? They're, they're right where, we, where they are. Uh, they're not really experiencing um, victory in their lives. But when we challenge and when we say, okay, this is what God's Word says, now, when you face a situation, a circumstance, which attacks your purity or which attacks your holiness, right, this is what you need to do maybe in the realm of your thoughts, maybe in the realm of your imaginations. And uh, maybe, you know, you need to stop it right there and not act on the inducement or not act on the invitation. Right? So that's when they are empowered, the hearer is empowered, the audience, you know, gets to experience the power of God's word. Uh, well, yeah, I spoke it, I declared these things null and void, and things cleared up, right? So I was so oppressed, so heavy, so tempted, but I nullified it with the word of God. Just like the example that the Lord says, you know, it is written and I spoke it out and I said it out and I renewed my mind with the word of God so that I did not go down that path in my mind, right? And so I, I was, my will was strong enough to even resist that, uh, uh, that temptation. I, I did not step into action, but it was curtailed in the realm of my thoughts itself. So, so things like that, right? So, uh, make the word applicable. Okay, stay focused on the theme. Uh, use illustrations or real life examples. Now, uh, we'll we'll be looking at illustrations when we make uh, you know put together a sermon outline. Now, illustrations. Uh, what does an illustration mean? It just means a picture, right? To illustrate something is to draw something. So when we illustrate a truth, uh, when we we are actually drawing out, so it becomes visible, uh, it becomes clearer, right? So you illustrate. So how do we illustrate uh, something? You know, let's say, um, uh, okay, this is how, for example, uh, James chapter one, and uh, you're saying, okay, this is how the process of breakdown uh, of uh, you know uh, temptation happens. You know, James chapter one talking about all this. So. To illustrate that, maybe you can use a real life example, okay, or uh, or testimony, right? Uh, but these need to be used cautiously, knowing that you know all these examples may, may not be perfect. You know, I remember once when uh, we were in um, uh, this was a time when we were um, doing an outreach. And this was an outreach where we were uh, going to several schools and. Uh, we were ministering to uh, several schools, and this was also a time when there was a, a World Cup cricket, um, and you know, it was just about to happen, or it just happened. So, we had testimonies of cricketers who could, um, you know, uh, and and uh, we were using that, you know, those videos. So we were sh showing, um, you know, Hans Ekronje, South African cricketer, and we were, you know, uh, and showing you know, how he is a, be a believer. So his testimony, and we we're saying, you know, these people are all believers, and so the thing is, we need to use them cautiously in the sense, um, you know, later we also, there was this, much later, years later, you know, we also heard that uh, Hansi Kronje was involved in betting and, uh, you know, and how, um, uh, you know, this whole testimony of his, you know, it, it was actually uh, spoiled because of that, because he was involved in match fixing, right? So... You know, things like that. So we need to be careful when we use um, uh, real life examples, uh, testimonies, and um, and really we need to ask God, you know, uh, because not all experiences that we share are, you know, are something that people are going through. Right? They may not be able to relate to it. Okay. So the, of course, a, a good way to do it is to look at scripture, you know, first and foremost, give priority and see, okay, in scripture, is there anything that um, uh, you know, can I use any of these real life examples? You know, is there something um, that is there that I can share? Okay, that would be a safe thing to do, right? Um, 
but also you know if you're using uh, of course it helps to illustrate definitely bring things uh, clearly but um, just be cautious you know does it really connect or is it a you know a story that i'm using because it's a nice story i like it right uh, it happened in my life and i just i just want to use it right so think about it right and if it's if it can be avoided if you feel that okay it's not really applicable it's not doesn't really bring out the truth it's not really effective uh, then don't use it okay but think about it okay can i use it or not right real life but illustrations are indeed powerful Right? They bring bring out the truth. Many times people remember the story and forget the truth. <laughs> right? I remember the first time um, when I was in a youth camp, and uh, you know this pastor who was there, he, he shared the story. So I I remember the illustration so vividly. Right? So uh, but I forget what I forget the message. I forget what he was actually trying to share. But this this was a very funny story. So I remember the story. In fact, I met him and I told him that. But I I don't I don't remember the message, but I remember your story. Now that's not something that you want to leave people with, right? You you want to connect to it, and so that people remember the truth of what was shared. Okay. Um, another one uh, is that when we minister, minister at the spiritual level of the audience okay very very important so what do we mean by that so we know that you know maybe you know if it's for if your audience is um, a group of believers maybe it's a church maybe it's a christian audience predominantly christian so you what is the spiritual level you know, are they spiritually mature you get to know that right maybe um, are they students so you know what season of life they are in okay are they you know like business folks professionals you know what season of life they are in so um once you understand that you minister at their spiritual level you know let maybe if they are children and uh, you know you know in what level of maturity they are in and then you know you minister at their level so it's good to understand that okay um just want to read from 1 Corinthians 2 and paul says uh well talking about the fact that um you know uh, that he ministered in, and he wanted to uh, share Christ crucified. Okay, let's just read that passage. So this is what he says. Um, and I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness, in fear, and in much trembling, and my speech and preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. Okay, so so we see something very important that he is um, uh, saying, saying that, okay, uh, I was with you, and this is what I determined that I will uh, I will just share about Christ and Christ crucified, and my message will not be with words of great words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the Holy Spirit, in demonstration of this power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, So among those who are mature, so he's talking about different people, right? Uh, so among those who are mature, we do speak the wisdom, yet not the wisdom of this age, but the, the hidden mysteries, the revelation. Right? So we do speak that. If you go down, you know, he says in chapter 3 and verse 1, And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you are not able to receive it, and even now you are still not able, for you are still carnal. Okay, So they had a problem. The Corinthian church had a problem. They, are, they were carnal. They were division. They were fighting, strife, everything. And because of which, it says, because of carnality, you're not able to receive the solid food. I wanted to teach you many things. I wanted to share many things, but you're not able to receive it. So, so it's a very uh, practical thing. 
to minister at the level of their spiritual le uh, at the level of their spirituality or level of the thing why because some are not able to receive it and it also helps because um you know practically speaking you know if uh, if a person is born again it, it helps to you know uh, if a person is a new believer, it helps to teach about okay, what does it mean to be a new believer? What does you know, and all those things which come with it. Okay, what do we do when it comes to worship? When it comes to prayer? When it comes to you know, baptism of the Holy Spirit, faith, and you know, your identity as a new believer, all that. Now that will lay a foundation, and then we can build on other things. You know, straight away if we go into okay, uh, you know, kingdom building and uh, kingdom of God, and uh, you know, um, you know prophecy and all those things well for some it could be okay but then for some it will be like okay i i don't know the basics so people be floundering right so it's good to know the spiritual level and then teach accordingly and especially true when it's a when it's a church congregation you know as a pastor as a spiritual leader you're actually journeying with the congregation and and typically i i remember you know um like when we started off here at APC, and I remember some of those messages that were being, you know, uh, shared at that time. And I think um, I, yeah. I, I, I remember going for a church camp. We used to, you know, go for a church camp, and that was the first time that uh, for APC, uh, this was 2005, I think, maybe October or sometime. The first time for uh, All People's Church, there was this whole message on prophesying. Okay, baptism of the Holy Spirit. Of course, it was already always taught, but then the whole thing of stepping into a prophecy, you know, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, how to hear God's voice, and, and it was a brand new thing. But by then, people were already open to the work of the Spirit. Okay, they had already been taught. You now, right from 2001. Uh, when, when church started, 2001, February 18, uh, till then, you know, they'd already been taught, you no, know, we don't need to wait, you know, such a long time, but then that is how it was. It was taught sequentially. It was, uh, so people were ready. Uh, they were at a stage where they could receive that teaching. So it was all about, you know, I, I think those initial years was about character, uh, building on character, living a you know, good Christian uh, life and your testimony and all those things, all those foundations, basic things were laid and then, you know, stepping into uh, uh, ministering in power and so on, or hearing God's voice uh, and so on, right? So, uh, so for the church, uh, it was a new thing, and I remember being part of it and saying, "Wow, this is new. We've never heard the, heard this before," and and so on. But we were ready to receive, right? So it helps. So when uh, so it, so the thing is, it helps the person, it helps the audience to receive it, okay? Uh, and all the other things have been dealt with, okay? So how do we arrive at that? You know, it's it's just that you just pray and you 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 receive. Uh, if you receive a check in your spirit, okay, people are not yet ready, then maybe it's not. Um, but also, you know, sometimes you might you might feel intimidated in the sense, uh, oh, it's a new thing. Uh, should I share? Should I not share? It could be our own personal emotions going through. Right. So learn to discern that. You know, it's just uh, me thinking, okay, God. You know, these this people are from a different background altogether. They've not heard about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I'm fearful, will they stone me? Will they, you know, <laughs> uh, will they invite me? Those kind of fears could be there, right? So learn to discern that and, and differentiate, okay? Um, it's not that. It's just God is actually leading me. And these are my own fears. So let me learn to put it aside and go with what God wants to uh, minister here. Okay. So any questions? Uh, before we move to the next one, um, uh, why on preparing a message, or maybe any experiences that you had, um, which are not uh, which have not been covered here, um, anything? So, uh, like, how many of you um, like? Share the word regularly. I know some are pastors, maybe. Uh, I know John Paul is a pastor. How many of you like share the word regularly, maybe on a once in a week or once in two weeks or something? Um, just put your hand up. Okay, Anita. Okay. Um, uh, uh, how regularly, Anita? Is it like um, a weekly thing or a uh, fortnightly? 
past a weekly uh, or uh, once in a month okay okay one weekly weekly or once in a month okay fine fine so anything that you'd like to share you know um maybe you have a personal discipline of preparing and you know uh did we touch upon it was there anything else that you do uh, that might be helpful to the class um i think like that pastor i mean you covered okay. everything okay okay uh, fine uh, john you would like to say anything john do you take a walk on the beach to prepare the message <laughs> uh, anything um anything at all okay uh, i guess so uh, i guess we'll move on so we we'll look at you know the different types of sermons okay again i just wanted to say that you know these are um see these have been developed from hindsight in the sense okay um uh, okay we could do this there's nothing wrong in addressing uh, in this and then we see that pattern in scripture so uh, so this is how it is okay it could be helpful okay so the thing is we don't have to kind of be constrained by it but this should really help us to explore you know different ways of uh, ministering to the to our congregations right so that's why we are looking at it um so well there's no Uh, we we see that pattern in scripture so we are looking at it okay so the first one uh, when we look at different types of sermons uh, the first one is a topical sermon okay uh, if you if you remember we we looked at okay what are the ways of studying okay we looked at uh, a study a topic uh, study so similarly we have a topical sermon okay so what is a topical sermon so it has a particular topic okay and by definition the main uh like divisions or the points in the sermon are actually derived from the topic itself okay so what do we mean by that okay let's say you're talking about god's love okay now that's a topic god's love or the love of god um so the main points or the main division are from that topic okay so it's not from one particular verse so it's from that topic which means all the uh, all the uh, the main points the subheadings and everything could be from various texts all through scripture right it could be from the old testament it could be from uh, the new testament you know each point that you are substantiating um that the text meaning the scripture reference uh, the scripture text could be from you know anywhere in the bible right it could be from Uh, anyway so it could be different okay so but all that is actually contributing to the main theme okay it's building on that main idea which is god's love okay <laughs> sorry so um so firstly we see that um the the main points are from the topic and secondly that by definition it means that it does not require a text as the basis okay so when we what do we mean by that uh, does that does not mean that we are not going to substantiate um you know with reference to scripture but we are we just talking about let's say you know it can be uh, social media and its uh, and its abuse okay let's say one sunday you want to talk about that right so you see that it doesn't have chapter and verse right but when we are actually uh expanding on the message and we are pointing to that theme when we have the different points and the different sub points uh we will have scripture references which will substantiate what we are saying uh but the the topic itself need not be from a verse right uh from a from a text scripture text right um so um so we start with the uh, topic and then we go to the main uh, main uh, 
points and um, and these uh, main points could have several scripture uh, or maybe it could have subtopics also sub points and um, it uh, it gives us uh, an understanding of what the bible talks about uh, that particular topic you know is there uh, is there something that the scripture talks about you know and and i remember you know, you know um, uh, when we had a research subject like people actually took uh, topics which were quite um, quite unusual you know the topic of uh, social work and uh, you know is that uh, what does the bible talk about that uh, social work and also um, and things like that some some unusual uh, topics about women in ministry and uh, and and and, uh, uh, and also something about uh, so these were some of the topics, but so the topics can be very, very uh, interesting, um, and the topics can be very some sometimes controversial, etc. You know, but it it's um, it's since we are looking at scripture, um, the objective of it or the end result of it will be that uh, at the at the end of uh, the the message, the audience will get to hear or understand what does the bible say about this okay let's say the whole thing of uh, maybe uh, homosexuality gay marriages and all that you know which is which is which you see in society um, so let's say you you're sharing about that uh, so you're going to be you know taking scripture uh, to sub, to really um, uh, to add weight to what you're sharing and by the end of it like the audience would have gained an understanding of what scripture actually what god says about this particular topic so that is um that is what would happen okay um so the emphasis is on the subject matter or the subject of the topic and not really on a one text okay so that's something that we need to understand okay so what are some examples okay um there are several examples uh, uh, given here. Okay, so one example in, in your notes, if you see, it's like reasons for unanswered prayer. Okay, so it's a six point message. What are the reasons for unanswered prayer? So if you notice, every point there has a, a different scripture reference. It is from elsewhere, you know, it could be anywhere in scripture, right? From the Psalms, from James, from Matthew, uh, from Proverbs and uh, First Peter 3, etc. Right? So uh, it talks about, um, you know, uh, so various things uh, that we, uh, very various um, scriptures, right? All through uh, we see that, okay? So some reasons for unanswered prayer asking amiss you know you are not don't ask according to the will of god you're asking that you might spend it on your own pleasures that's what james 4 talks about okay maybe there is sin in your heart you harbored sin in your heart your motives are not clear and therefore you know we don't receive uh, doubting god's word you know we doubt god's word uh, James one talks about that he who doubts is like a like the waves of the sea he's uh, you know he cannot you can't expect to receive anything because he's doubting Maybe you know it's vain repetitions. It's just a, you know, it's just a traditional prayer. You don't believe. There's no faith in it, and uh, it's a vain repetition. Okay, I'm going to say this ten times, fifteen times, and at the end of it, hopefully, you know, my prayer will get answered. No vain repetition. Disobedience to the word. My life does not reflect um, the truth of God's word. Um, inconsiderate behavior in marriage. Right, a conjugal relationship, right? It's talking about marriage, and it says um, 1 Peter 3, very clear, you know, husbands, dwell with your wife with understanding um, so that your prayers may not be hindered. Okay, so several things. Okay, so what, what would happen at the end of the message? Well, um, the person gets an understanding of the reasons for unanswered prayer. Okay, so you go through this, I, these are some reasons and this is what the word of god talks about unanswered prayer okay these these are some reasons. so you know we we'll, now we looked at six and i'm sure it just expands our understanding okay these are the reasons why prayers cannot prayers are not answered okay so similarly you know different topics like peaceful life hopeful life etc see now a, a, a topical sermon has its advantages Okay, um, in the sense, well, uh, based on the topic, the person gets to know, okay, what does the word of God say? 
okay what does the word of god say about this uh, particular topic yes definitely you know that's that's uh, that's an advantage um, but also it can be restrictive in the sense um, you know here are some six points right we looked at okay six things now there could be more okay there could be more but the thing is that uh, we may not for the lack of time or whatever we we may not be able to uh, you know uh, look at everything right so in that sense it could be it could be restrictive okay there it has some constraints uh, it may not be complete you know the i'm sure there could be more six right um more than six for unanswered prayers and also sometimes we we may not be able to look into the complexity of answered prayer unanswered prayer you know it, it might seem very simplistic okay um in the sense uh, you know there could be there could be a complex you know like number of factors um but then uh, what we are presenting could be very very simplistic in, in that way right uh, yes these six you know backed up by scripture we know for sure uh, but there, maybe there are some very complex factors right which may, we may not be able to address so so in that sense uh, a topical study you know though it has very good advantages in that sense uh, it it may not you know be able to fulfill all that right well we know that we know that and then we we still uh, use a topical study it's it's good and maybe one way to overcome that is do another you know uh, study on the same topic where it's a slightly more deeper slightly more expansive um, you know uh, uh, you know study a deeper study so that's one way to overcome it right because um, uh, maybe at one level you, you might maybe you have one hour you have two hours and then you this is all that you did right and you do uh, you come back with another yeah. Uh, uh you know a deeper study at a at a deeper level and you could you 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 could do that so those are some ways of overcoming um that uh, you know that disadvantage right so it's a topical study now topical studies are great for you know if you're if you're having a small group uh if you're uh, having a um, you know if you're just meeting together as a you know maybe a small gathering um you know, topical studies are great right it it will serve that purpose people are gathering together for a bible study and typically when we say you know a small group meeting a home group meeting a bible study um you know this would really uh, this would help right this is something that um, that would help be helpful okay okay next one what is the next one it is textual sermon okay so in a textual sermon it is different from a topical study in the sense we are uh, here in a textual sermon we look at a scripture verse okay we look at a scripture verse we look at a text what we refer to as a text and we begin with that we start with that and we explain that and we begin with that okay so it's not a topic but it's a text so it's a verse okay so uh, for example it could be a, a, a it could be a verse uh, like i'm just i mean i've opened up one corinthians 4 so i'm just looking at this you know let a man so consider us as servants of christ and servants of the mysteries of god so that could be a text so it could be an explanation of that text so you will talk about you know what why who said that and uh, where where is this text and what is the context in which this text is found you know, you'll you'll get into that so it starts with the text itself it does not start start with a topic right it starts with the text it starts with the scripture uh, itself so the points of that sermon or the divisions of that sermon outline would come from the text okay so uh, you know if you look at some examples here Okay, examples uh, John 3:36 you know, he who believes in the son has eternal life okay uh, a life that never ends so if you see the points there given there uh, i'm just looking at the notes right it says okay 
the sun he's the provider of eternal life okay the condition of the heart to receive eternal life is one needs to believe um so it is available for whoever believes uh, it talks about the certainty right uh, he who believes has eternal life it talks about the duration you know the life that is eternal so it, everything is derived from the text it's as if the text is dissected right into many parts and all the points are taken from the text itself now to substantiate each of these points we could be quoting from or drawing from other texts like for example we're saying the sun okay so in order to describe or to give uh, or to explain the provider being the sun you know we could refer to other scripture we could have refer to john 3 16 we could refer to other scripture and and talk about that right okay okay so we'll we'll stop here so we've looked at um, topical sermon and we also looked at um, just started with the textual sermon we'll continue with this in the next class right okay thank you god bless